Helping Hands Foundation is a recipient of a brand new wheelchair bus. Nathan Brooke Salmon is our Black History feature this evening, and CPS addresses several questions about the COVID-19 vaccine program. Those are the headlines for Friday, February the 12th, 2021. Good evening, viewers. This is SXM Daily News, and I'm Valerie from Clinton. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And as usual, we have a full newscast for you, so let's get started. In our first story, last evening, February the 11th, 2021, CPS addressed several questions about the COVID-19 vaccine program in its Thursday evening panel discussion. As the COVID-19 vaccines are expected to arrive on St. Martin soon, the objective is to create herd immunity, which requires 70% of the population to be vaccinated before the upcoming hurricane season. The Honorable Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, Ministry VSR, Richard J.J. Panaflek, officially opened and closed the panel discussion. The guests consisted of Eva Lisa de Weaver, epidemiologist and head of Ministry of VSR Collective Prevention Services, CPS, Brechia Boutiquet, manager of operations of the White and Yellow Cross Foundation, Dr. Anand Ragosing, a resident general practitioner, and Dr. A.J. Deutz, medical immunologist and director of the Red Cross Blood Bank Foundation. After the opening remarks by the Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, the live stream started with a small presentation given by Ava Lisa de Weaver and Dr. Deutz. Dr. Deutz explained how vaccines work, how they are developed, but also shared some of the first results in the effect of the vaccine in Israel. In this evening's broadcast, you will hear from the Minister of Public Health, Richard Panaflek, Head of CPS, Epidemiologist, Mrs. Eva Lisa de Weaver, and Medical Immunologist, Dr. Deutz. Dr. Deutz went into detail explaining how the mRNA vaccine is not able to change your DNA and explain what ingredients are part of the vaccine. As Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, I'm pleased to kick off this public information session for the COVID-19 vaccine rollout on St. Martin. Tonight, we have a panel with a whole team of public health professionals with a well wealth of medical knowledge and experience that are here to answer questions and concerns about the vaccine. I would like to thank the vaccine management team and Dr. Deutz for making themselves available for this session. As the Ministry of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, we have been working day and night to ensure that Samarit is prepared to receive the vaccine. Even though updates can still happen, Tonight, the rollout plan for the vaccination against the COVID-19 virus on St. Martin will be shared with you. I hope that you will find this session helpful and encourage everyone who has questions to ask them here, because that is what this meeting is for. I thank you and God bless you. Tonight, as the head of CPS and a member of the vaccine management team, our aim for tonight's presentation is to walk you through some basic information about vaccines, how they are developed, and why they are important from a public health perspective. We will end the presentation by providing information on how you can sign up to receive the COVID-19 vaccine on St. Martin, and then open the floor to any questions. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Deitz. Um, if we're talking about uh, vaccines, uh, we, need to re we need to realize that vaccines are actually the most effective and most successful medical intervention we know. Uh, what we know now by experience that making use of vaccines, we are saving two to three million lives per year without counting, of course, the COVID vaccines we're going to discuss. So it's a very successful medical intervention with a lot of mortality reductions. And there are two graphs we just show where you can see that we have been using vaccines already for decades. So we have chosen a way to deal with a virus, as in this case, the COVID-19 virus, with a well-known system. As you can see in those graphs, we have affected different types of diseases already and also eliminated them, like polio. If you see in the, in the, in the 60s, by introduction of vaccination, it 
almost completely disappeared. And the same holds true through another disease, just as an example, like diphtheria, where vaccine was introduced in 1940. So making, again, use of vaccines is something very common, and the effects are enormous. Can I have the next uh, slide, please? So what these vaccines do, they, they make your body produce a protein that looks like the coronavirus protein. So you're actually simulating an infection without becoming sick. So your immune system, your defense system is triggered by this protein. You're going to make a resistance. Your immune response is going to make a resistance, partly called antibodies, against the virus. So the next time you see the real thing, you're ready to go. So the moment the virus comes in, you're not going to get sick. You're going to defend yourself immediately with all the positive effects we expect without becoming sick by a normal infection. So in that case, how safe are vaccines and how are they developed? Well, vaccines are very safe. As, I, as we show in this figure, before being available on the market and for patients and persons, it goes through a different phases for what we call the clinical, clinical trials, where, where we look at safety, we look at efficacy, and we look at the quality. So you go from a preclinical phase to phase one, where you look at the safety. So you, you, you analyze the effect of the vaccine for safety on a small group of participants. You then go to phase two, where you start looking at the safety and looking at anything else, the dosage, that's phase two for a, a bigger proportion of uh, participants. And then you go to phase three, which is a huge amount of uh, persons you're going to test. And that's called phase three, where you look at the effectiveness of the vaccine. In the case of the vaccine you're going to get in St. Martin, the Pfizer uh, vaccine, that was tested before coming on the market on a group of about 40,000 persons with a lot of positive effects. Can we just go back one slide, please? So when it's finished, when everything is OK, it's published, then it goes to the regulatory uh, agencies in each and every country to look at the data they generated and see that it's safe. When it's safe and the safety is confirmed by, for instance, the FDA in the United States and EMA in Europe, then it becomes available for uh, the whole population, which is now going to happen in St. Martin. And then you go into phase four. So this effect, this whole process has been done already. So the, the vaccine you're going to get is a very, very safe vaccine. One question that came up and we would like to immediately address is the fact that how is it possible that this has been done in a year's time? Wasn't that too too fast? Wasn't that, we, did we skip anything? No, we didn't skip anything. Secondly, we had new techniques available. And thirdly, there's something we need to realize that for the first time, a virus was a big threat for rich countries, for Western countries, in which they invested billions of dollars in EUs to get the vaccine as soon as possible for them, and of course for us, to be back to the normal as we want in a much shorter period of time. Meanwhile, head of CPS in her PowerPoint presentation explained the registration roadmap and the vaccination registration. Well, similar to other countries in the world, uh, St. Martin has set priority groups to first receive the vaccine. The first priority group will be given to healthcare professionals and then persons who are over age 60 years. And once this group is vaccinated, the next groups will follow. Now, in terms of vaccination locations, we will first roll out our COVID-19 vaccination clinics, first at the Vineyard Building, which is where CPS is located, and then subsequently to Colby Community Help Desk and the Dutch Quarter Community Help Desk. Now, in terms of the vaccine procedure and uh, similar to what Dr. Deitz alluded to, uh, the each location will have a, a process, and this is just outlining the simple process. So you would be um, invited in for your vaccine after you register, and you will go through a temperature tech check along with a health questionnaire to ensure that you are 
feeling healthy and able to receive the vaccine. Once uh, you get the temperature check, you will go through a registration and a health check, and then we will obtain um, your consent. You will be um, asked to uh, go into a separate room to receive the vaccination. And as Dr. Deitz mentioned, after the vaccine is administered, you will be monitored by a medical team for 15 minutes. And then after that, you will be given your second appointment um, and that would be given through SMS or email. Now, everyone has been asking, how do I register? And so to facilitate those who are tech savvy, we have provided a registration portal um, and the, email, the portal address is on the on this slide, which will also be disseminated publicly subsequently after this meeting. Um, and for those who might not have the techno technological means or the capacity to fill out the registration link digitally, we will also be providing paper based registration forms, which can be uh, which will be offered at your doctor's office. Um, if you have a doctor, uh, select pharmacies and government locations. Once we have a, a full, a complete list of where these paper registration forms can be available, we will make that known through the government of St. Martin's Facebook and website. And essentially, with the registration link or the paper based, you will be instructed to fill out uh, some basic information along with providing a copy of your ID to verify your age. And then you will receive your appointment details via WhatsApp or if you've provided an email address through email. Now, uh, this is, I believe, the final slide of the presentation. And what we want to convey to everyone uh, tuned in is that um, we, our overall objective for the COVID vaccination strategy on St. Martin is that we would like to vaccinate at least 70% of our population on St. Martin before the start of hurricane season. And while this is an aggressive task, um, we want to be able to ensure that we have the coverage we need um, before hurricane season gets here. Hopefully it will be a, a mild season. Um, and this is why we are pushing to get this done very actively. Our aim is to roll this out um, in the last week of February um, and then publicly uh, the first week of March. And as we continue now with other news, as we continue to honor our local heroes and heroines for Black History Month, this evening we will feature Mavis Brooks Solomon, the former vice chair of the Council of Advice St. Martin. Mavis Brooks Solomon was born on the island of Curaçao on December the 1st, 1950. She was a mother of two and a grandmother of four. After completing high school at the Rodolphus Collegia, on Curaçao, she went on to become a teacher. She taught elementary school there for six years before immigrating to St. Martin, where she taught at the Lionel Connor School for four years. She then became the principal for the Old Pontiac School, which is the present Sister Borgia Elementary School, for 10 years. Teacher Brooks moved on to the Department of Education, where she served as a school guidance officer in charge of math education director of public schools and department head. She was a math education teacher and guidance officer of one-time teacher's training program on St. Martin. In the meantime, she studied political science, MOB Stats in the Richting, got a master in Antillian law at the UNA, which is the University of the Netherlands Antilles in Curaçao. In 2009, she obtained a Master of Law degree in International and European Law at the Erasmus University of Rotterdam. She was also a member of the Council of Advice of the Netherlands Antilles for five years. In 1997, she was decorated by the Queen as a member of the House of Orange for her dedication in education and care for cancer survivors, being one herself. From 2006 to 2010, Mrs. Brooks was the Deputy Minister of Plenipotentiary in the Antillian Cabinet, Emily de Jong El Hage in the Netherlands. From 101010 until her death on January the 10th, 2020, Mrs. Brooks Solomon was the Vice Chair of the Council of Advice, St. Martin. 
And still to come, President of the Windward Islands Chamber of Labor Union meets with the Ombudsman on the 12.5% cut. I'll have the details of that story and more when SXM Daily News returns. Hi, I'm Switch. And I'm Save. And together we're here to tell you about WIB Switch, Switch and Save, save mortgage, mortgage Offer. Now at WIB, you can save and benefit from great specials when you decide to bring your mortgage to WIB. When you switch, WIB will offer you payment of penalty fees up to three months interest, payment of notary fees, waive of bank closing fees, and also the lowest interest rate. Plus, you'll have the chance to win back one year of interest payment. Visit any of WIB's mortgage specialists and benefit from WIB's Switch and hey, 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 that's my part. <clears throat> and save mortgage offer. Wib, your partner in progress. Welcome back, viewers. You're watching SXM Daily News, and I'm Valerie Van Putten. As we continue now in other news, the Helping Hands Foundation is the recipient of a brand new wheelchair bus. The over $70,000 bus was officially handed over to the representatives of the foundation during a ceremony held at Real Auto Thursday afternoon. On hand for the joyous occasion were, among other invited persons, the director of the National Recovery Program Bureau, NRPB, Claret Connor, the Dutch representative, Anse Martin, the Honorable Chris Johnson, and the Honorable Minister of VSA, Richard Panafleck. The bus was made possible through various means of monetary donations through, among other entities, the Trust Fund Community Development Program. And also on hand for the occasion was Jose Summers of the Salmon Werkende Funds that supports social projects in the Dutch Caribbean and Rolf Hunink of Resources for Community Resilience, R4CR, an organization established on St. Martin to provide funding from the St. Martin Trust Fund to community-based organizations such as the Helping Hands Foundation. Speaking at the ceremony Thursday afternoon, the president of the Helping Hands Foundation, Antonio Rogers, had a lot of praise for those organizations who helped in making the vehicle become a reality. Mr. Rogers also expounded on the significance of the wheelchair bus for the Helping Hands Foundation and its clients. Meanwhile, speaking at the event, the director of the NRPB, Claret Connor, expressed appreciation for the work of the Helping Hands Foundation. More importantly, I think what you do as a foundation, Mr. President, is something that we all cherish in the sense that the communities that we come from, um, the communities that we belong to, benefits from something like this. So we understand the importance of you having the tools that you need in order to take care of those who have taken care of us. So when we come to the age or the stage where we need to be taken care of, that that transition can happen smoothly. So for me, it wasn't a real challenge. It was just about knowing who to go to, who to speak to. And then today is the result of that. I would like to, to say a little bit about what the whole trust fund is about. Because there, there were three elements that was established for this trust fund. One is community development, which this definitely is part of. The other one is you know, good governance and how we manage our country. And the other one was economic development. But the first one was community. And this speaks directly to that. So I think that, uh, that this is a very good example as to uh, what the donor um, set out to do and accomplish. And by you enjoying the fruits of this uh, grant, 
today, hopefully more community-minded organizations can also do the same. With that, I congratulate you again, Helping Hands. <laughs> Being here this afternoon is a special occasion. It gives me satisfaction and above all, immense joy to be here amongst you. And now as we continue in other news, member of the Anti-Poverty Platform and president of the White Clue, Mrs. Claire Elshot, speaking at their press conference, which was held at the Weifel building yesterday, gave an update about her meeting with the Ombudsman on the 12.5% cut. The Windward Islands Chamber of Labor Union president says that she informed the Ombudsman of the remuneration of the 12.5% and how it was a violation of the Constitution of St. Martin as well as a violation with the international treaty, state legislation, and national legislation. Mrs. Elshad expounded further. Make no made use of the opportunity to present the denunciation of the cuts in remuneration legislation, which was agreed by all presidents of the affiliated unions. Then the way to the president informed the Ombudsman how the legislation which cut workers remuneration in the private sector in 20% and how the draft law to cut the workers in the public and city public sector and a half percent were in violation of the Constitution of St. Martin, as well as in violation with international treaties, state legislation, and national legislation. The Ombudsman requested the WICU to present these concerns and the legislation and articles which were being violated in writing for their review. The Ombudsman explained and clarified that the Wicklow can spy at any time their complaint against the government entities which will not to change remuneration of workers. These formal complaints can be filed online on the website of the Ombudsman or via a complaint form which can be picked up at the reception end. The handling of the complaint is a standard procedure which the Ombudsman has established between all complaints. The Constitution gives only the Ombudsman the possibility to request the Constitutional Court to review national legislation. If this legislation is not made in compliance with the Constitution of Zimbabwe, the Ombudsman informed the Ombudsman informed us that the legislation has not reached the Ombudsman yet, but the reviewing will consider the concerns expressed by the unions of the Chamber of Labor Unions when reviewing of the draft national ordinance approved by Parliament. The Ombudsman and staff asked several questions and invited the week to inform in writing. Some of the questions were how the union see the application of Article 112 of the LMA, the National Ordinance and Civil Service, which gives the minister the right to take decisions when no agreement is reached with the union. How the, legis how the legislation was affected the worker. What is the what does the WICU expect from the Ombudsman? And which articles in international, state, and national legislation, according to the unions, were violated in the draft legislation regulating cuts in remuneration? What suggestions or alternatives the unions have to address the government's liquidity problem caused by the pandemic? After thanking the Ombudsman for listening to concerns of the WICU about the legislation to cut in remuneration in the private sector, public sector, and semi public sector workers, the WICU president offered the Ombudsman all cooperation to provide all information requested in writing to 
consider and to address. Now turning to our weather forecast of February the 12th, 2021, the Atlantic high pressure system will maintain breezy conditions across the region. Low level clouds embedded in the wind flow may cause isolated showers. Due to above normal seas, a small craft advisory remains in effect. Small craft operators and sea bathers should continue to exercise caution. So the outlook through Sunday midday partly cloudy and breezy with brief showers possible. Now, let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, 41 confirmed COVID-19 cases on the island. I'll have the details of that story with SXM Daily News Returns. Innovative Banco Medico Contactless Smart Card. Your Banco Medico Smart Card is now equipped with a contactless feature for payments, so get ready to tap and go. Contactless payments are fast, easy, secure, and accepted worldwide at all Maestro enabled contactless terminals. Tap for transactions equivalent to or less than 100 NAV, or the US dollar equivalent. You will receive notifications via email anytime you tap. Tap, tap, and pay fast, fast with WIB. For more information, visit our website at wib-bank.net. Tap and go with your partner in progress. Welcome back, viewers. And as we end this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening and also this week, in our local COVID-19 update, as of February the 11th, there were 13 persons who tested positive for COVID-19. However, 41 persons have recovered bringing the total active cases to 89. The total number of confirmed cases is now 1,985. The Collective Prevention Services, CPS, are monitoring 89 people in home isolation. No patients are hospitalized at the St. Martin Medical Center. The total number of deaths due to COVID-19 remains at 27. The number of people recovered since the first case surfaced on St. Martin has increased to 1,869. 168 people are in quarantine based on contact tracing investigations carried out by CPS. The Ministry of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, VSA, the airport health team in collaboration with the healthcare laboratory St. Martin ACLS have tested 2,419 travelers arriving at the Princess Juliana International Airport, while CPS has tested 16,065 people throughout the community. As the numbers continue to fluctuate, CPS will continue to actively execute its contact tracing measures. Minister Panifleck urges everyone to remain cautious when in public places. For your own safety, please continue to wear a mask, maintain a social distance of two meters, practice good hand hygiene, and remain mindful of large gatherings. And with that, viewers, it brings us to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening and also this week. I am Valerie from Putin, thanking you so much for joining me this evening. And just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to sinmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you so much for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again on Monday. Do enjoy a safe weekend.